It's been a busy year of work on our system in Colorado, and we've been very fortunate to have a lot of rain. There are very few straight lines in nature, but our pipe bridge is one that we don't mind seeing. Some viewers had asked to see how we secured the north end of the bridge cable. This was done with a cable stretched between two trees and resting on concrete footings. Our first refinement to the system was to add a half inch Lexan window to the turbine. We don't want to get slapped in the face with this belt, so we fabricated a custom belt guard to protect the innocent and unwary. Leaving the sides open makes periodic grease lubrication of bearings very easy. We also added a vent fan with thermostat control to help regulate the temperatures in the powerhouse during summer. The grass seed we planted this past winter has come in nicely as well as the seed we put down at the end of the building season last year. All is back to normal. All the foot traffic during construction has created a good amount of erosion on our footpath. Our concern is that continued use of this area might undermine the integrity of the supporting rocks for the bridge. After noticing that cows and local wildlife like to use the path to access the creek, we decided to block it off with fencing to minimize any further erosion. Blocking our log bridge also meant we needed to install a makeshift ladder on the north end of the catwalk bridge. At the intake weir, we found that water is persistent in finding its own path to get under the weir. Our solution for this is to install a large rubber mat in the final collection pond above the weir. Opening our standpipe drain, we dug a trench at the inlet to the settling pond. After burying the rubber liner, we secured the rubber around the standpipe with a large stainless steel hose clamp and weighted down the rubber on all sides with stones. Then the rubber was attached to the weir itself with aluminum strips and screws. Expansive bentonite clay was installed on the lower side of the weir. This was done weeks after the rubber was installed and would have been better if done under the rubber on the upside of the weir, but we hadn't yet bought the clay. As any unwanted buildup of sediment collects over time, it will be moved to the lower side to help secure the weir. Even though we have a small seepage of water around the weir, it is minimal compared to the water being collected into the penstock. One of our biggest challenges has always been to get water out of the creek into a pipe in a controlled fashion. Holding it along this grade on the south side of the creek was not really feasible. The grade of the south side, both up creek and down creek, was far too steep and unbuildable. We elected instead to use a meadow to control water drawn out of the creek via a pipeline on the north side and add it to water already flowing through the meadow. However, if you've been following our series, you'll remember as the springtime meltwaters rose last year, we discovered it was starting to undermine our installation of our Plan A. The planned path to our intake point was already underwater. A few days later, we discovered our pipeline had been torn apart and thrown downstream by the rising waters. Our plan A was left hanging in midair and the water was still rising. The creek had cut an entirely new course down the canyon and the original pipeline had been completely undermined. The water tore at the North Creek hillside and eroded the roots of the trees. And the next day, with water still rising, we discovered it had taken the whole hillside and the trees had been taken by the fury. 
The entire hillside above the creek was sloughing down into the raging waters. So much for plan A. We later discovered a spring further up the hill which had liquefied the underside of the hillside and contributed to the destruction. What it left was an unstable area to build on and a need for a new plan. With the water flow slowed, we took stock of the situation and discovered our intake point was essentially intact. There are two adjacent rocks that seem to be relatively permanent and they create a very workable intake point with a pool just below them. So we undertook to measure the elevation difference the simple way with a full garden hose. Yes, we still had roughly 18 inches of fall over 87 feet. All we needed to do was dig a trench for a flexible pipe to get us deep enough to let enough water pass. The hill still appears to be moving, so hard pipe didn't seem to be a cost-effective approach. Our original intake plan had been to use multiple 3 and 4 inch solid poly pipes to capture and join together in a makeshift junction to feed a 6 inch pipe. However, my contractor's dad had found a two-part stainless steel collection screen with a fine stainless steel mesh filter, which he agreed to let us have. It fit perfectly in the space between the rocks, and all we had to do was fabricate a solid junction to feed a 6-inch flexible pipe. So off to the pipe supplier for some inexpensive 6-inch poly pipe, along with some other parts, and it was time to get started with Plan B. Using a Fernco rubber fitting to connect the remaining PVC pipe, we dug a trench, supported the poly pipe, and hung it as well to set a rough grade. Digging roughly two and a half feet down, we got just enough drop to maintain some flow through the pipe around the down tree's root balls and threaded up the creek bed to our original intake point. Additionally, we installed an irrigation gate with a rubber seal gasket at the end of the pipe in the meadow. At the junction of the PVC pipe and the poly pipe, we tapped and installed a quarter inch screw as a small air vent. By initially placing the intake screen in the rock crevice and opening the screw in the air vent, the air valve was essential to prevent vapor lock. We allowed some water from the intake level to flow down to the grade into the lower pipe in the meadow. When the water had reached adequate pressure at the outlet end, we submerged the intake end into the pool below the intake point to prevent any intake of air. After closing the air vent screw, we opened the irrigation gate, effectively creating a siphon. Finally, after years of planning and executing, we had all the excess water we needed in the meadow. The risk of freezing in the winter is minimized by the intake being submerged in the creek with active moving water feeding it. The risk of water freezing in this point of the pipeline is minimized by the fact it has moving water in it and is bedded in moving water. The risk of freezing in this pipe should be minimized once it is covered fully with snow, which should provide some insulation from the coldest winter conditions in the air above. The pipe has been partially reburied through the trench section and we will make a point of removing the unburied flexible poly pipe prior to the spring melt-off which lasts about three to four weeks in high volume intensity. During springtime there should be plenty of water in the meadow to compensate for the loss. Our meter is happily spinning and we are now producing over 40 amps of continuous AC power which is the current load limit of the system. We still have sufficient water to produce even more power. We will keep an eye on the excess flow this winter before investing in more load for the system. The unused water is returned from the meadow to the stream from which it came, about 200 feet down from where it was taken out, thus minimizing any environmental impact. 
It's been a good year of work on our system, which is already providing a good deal of heat to the house. Next season we should finish our project with an increase in power output and some control systems to monitor the whole system. This water falling now is the ultimate source of our bounty and it will provide us with the blessings of carbon-free power in the coming year. It is very satisfying to finally see it working as planned. A big thank you to all our subscribers for your interest.